So now that we have the top side bearing surface down, we need to set up to make, or we need to set up to actually cut the taper on the outside profile. So right now it's just mill finished dough. We have not done anything to that profile. We're going to change out our collets. And then I'm putting in a quarter inch collet. And the way that I do this is actually, it's kind of funny. Um, when I was teaching myself to do this, I was trying between centers with a dog and I really couldn't find a dog that was set up well enough and that it was easy enough, did not mark the part, and gave me repeatable results. And I also tried cutting the taper um, with a boring head in the tailstock, but since the blank length is so hard to control, that it was that messed up the taper. And then more, more recently, I made this, which is a uh, essentially a fixture that fits the stop arm profile and fits in a 1316 collet that would hold this in the spindle and then I come up and support with the tailstock to drive it but that was giving me inconsistent results probably because I made it out of brass just quick and dirty um, to see if it'll work and it does work maybe if I took time to broach one out of steel it would uh, be it, it would fit tighter and all that because I was getting a little concentricity error but literally what I'm gonna do since <laughs> And this dawned on me after I spent hours trying to figure this out and trying different things. Since my top bearing, is, or top spindle is cylindrical, I can hold on to it in a quarter inch collet. No problem. And I'm not gonna mar the surface. I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not using cutting pressures here that are gonna really mess anything up. Um, especially with a nice sharp tool. I'm really just shaving off little bits of material at a time. So. This is this works perfectly. I mean, I'm surprised it took me that long to figure this out. So I'm gonna ramp up to 900 RPM. Yeah, you can see how concentric it spins. It looks a little wobbly, but that's just because the stop arm is off center. But if I measured that uh, run out on the bottom spindle, the TIR would be probably under 2,007 inch, which is pretty good for. Um, flipping apart like that with my lathe, I should say. I mean, Foxy collets are very repeatable. This is a hardened truck. It's a pretty crappy collet, but it works fine for, uh, for the stuff I do. So, we're at 900 RPM. I'm just gonna take down the body. We'll do 35,000 depth of cut. Or sorry, 17,500 depth of cut, 35,000 removal. We're just going to bring the profile down. Right now it's 7.8, which is 875. The final largest spot on the rotor is 807, 8075-ish. So we, we can hog off a bit of material before we start cutting the paper. Typically I like to hit about 815, 820 before I start cutting the paper. So, do one more cut and then I'll measure. This tool is doing really well. I, I was really impressed. And only like $7. It's pretty amazing. It actually makes chips. Okay. If I got a burr popping up, I'm just going to pull that off. Take a quick measure. So, we can start to cut the taper. I'm going to back off. I'm using the top side again. Um, you know, I'm just cranking it by hand, but the surface finish I'm getting on is really good. That means I tuned in my top side properly. So, try to keep the feed really even. And we're just going to take off five ten thousandths passes at a time. It's going to cut a lot at the beginning, and now see we're stopped cutting. It's because we took down most of the mass. Ten thou. Surface finish right now does not matter very much, but on the last pass, we're going to take a lot of care to make it as, 
as you know as good a finish as possible. Of course, these get laughed quite a bit, so um, you can kind of hide some stuff. Not hide, but you can get rid of some of your little you know apprentice marks. But going into the lap, if you have a rotor that has a really nice finish, um, it helps a lot. Okay. So we almost made full contact on the entire length of taper. I'm going to feed in two thousandths, and then we're going to go. So this taper that I'm turning now is going to be mated to a Morse taper three. Um, for the casings, I have a reamer that I have set up to ream out the taper. So te technically, since I'm cutting this on the top side, it's not actually cutting a Morse three, but for the short length that we have here, it's essentially cutting a more safer three. Okay. Pretty good. About one thou over. So now it comes to the tricky, tricky part. I'm gonna feed in not even a full dash line. Just try to shave off that last bit. And you can see we're taking a really, really small cut. I'm slowing down my feed rate a lot. Um, I do have a, a drill with a little T wrench in here that I sometimes use to drive this, but right now I'm only doing one part so I can do this pretty well. Yeah, we're just basically burnishing the surface right now. I'm going to back off of my feet so we're not dragging. Reset the compound. And that looks really nice. That's a really, really, really nice finish. Um, I'm going to break the edges, grab a scraper, and... So, I like to get the tool out of here. We're going to break the edges with a threading tool, just because it has a nice angle to it. We don't want to remove too much material. Um, just enough to clear up any fur. Like that. There we go. Oh, I actually forgot. I need to delete that, uh, the back face. Takes care of that. So I have a triangle-ish scraper here. I don't use them for everything, but for this, it kind of it's nice, especially this one. I have a polished surface on here. Um, if your scrapers aren't really sharp when you're doing this, you'll leave a pretty jagged edge. But I'm just going to come in here, just like that. I'm go the other way. Really sharp scraper makes this very, very simple. I like to go at two different angles on the inside of the board and from the outside. It just helps smooth over that arc. finished rotor. The only thing that isn't done is drilling and tapping the uh, stop arm retaining screw 
But that is just a 632 thread. I would just, I'll just drill that and tap it just like it is now in the quarter inch collet. But we will take a look at this. So we have a variety of features that are all referenced. Oop, there it goes. Features that are referenced. So we have our um, our dog drive, which we is the first thing we machined on the mill. Um, tapered lower bearing. It's a Morse zero. It will fit a Morse zero, I should say. We have our bearing journal on the lower. We have our uh, relief, and then we have our outside face relief. A Morse 3 on the outside in a really nice finish that will lap in really well. This is a 400 or .420, sorry, .422 bore uh, channel and you can see those really nice curves in our final dimension. So that'll shorten the stroke a lot. So those turned out really nice. The finish on the inside is something I'm working on. Um, I'd like to find a way to make it a bit better, but for now I just polish them out with some rubberized abrasives. So we have our um, bearing face on the face of the rotor machined to a pretty precise tolerance. Relief on the top and our top bearing is ready to fit. So the next step for this is well this is actually done other than threading that but i'll do that off camera um i need to make casings i need to make knuckles i need to make bottom bearings and once i have the casings and the knuckles braze into the casings and the casings bored out i will um solder on the bottom bearing once it's reamed out and then i will fit each rotor to each casing and the bottom bearing because if you were to try something that took me a couple minutes of struggling to figure out if you were to try just to lap in this rotor this casing's machined incorrectly or it's just my gauge I should say um, but if you were to try to lap in this rotor to this casing you would have an awful uh, hard time getting it to lap because there needs to be tolerance in between the rotor and the wall of casing and that might sound obvious but you know when, when you're making them you think they're they need to be 100 percent precise but it actually needs to be about a thousandths or a thousandths and a half in between the wall of casing for it to actually spin well well for it to actually spin so once you have that bottom bearing soldered on to here and the two bearing faces meeting up at the same time and you can tune that in by reaming out the bottom bearing uh, on while it's attached to the rotor, so it's perfectly straight, um, while it's assembled to the casing, and I'll show that. But yeah, you need to have that bearing on, then you can lap this in. Because right now it fit, it spins until you, you know, uh, drive the casing in. So, but this rotor turned out really nice. I have a few others that I have also finished, so these are part of the batch. I'm really happy with the consistency that I'm getting them out to. So these are actually going to go into a sandblast um, after I clean up the insides of the ports with rubberized abrasives. And then these will sit for a bit while I make casings. I'm waiting on my die to be finished for the smaller 468 size knuckle, but once that gets in, I am full steam ahead I'm very excited about this project it's a lot of fun to make these and it's a lot of fun to show people that it is possible to do these well on manual machines and there are I know there are people who do them on manual machines you know or have done them on manual machines before since before I've been alive but um, I haven't been all too impressed with the ones that I've purchased from them but that's another story that doesn't belong on YouTube so I'm actually gonna shut off here so these turned out really well um, yeah looking forward to making the casings those are them that's the most fun part the rotors are stressful but thanks for watching